Okay, can you guys hear me? Days, looking at it, October twenty twenty. Do you have questions before I begin? Today is the last seminar in which we do new things. Well, not really new things, but I've seen that uh, Marcus uh, updated a bit the schedule for the next classes for the next seminars so we are going to do all the exams to both tomorrow and friday and i think on tuesday too um actually it would be a nice yeah well i don't know how to do that but uh, i would like to so to see you solving all the exams but uh, i don't really know how to make this happen uh, so I guess I will I will solve the old exams but uh, you should try yourself too in advance but anyway so if you don't have any question I will start with the, today's class so we are going to we're going to give a look at um, um triple integral with the change of variables for triple integrals so specifically mainly spherical coordinates and and then if we have time we are going to give a look a little bit to surface integrals okay so let's start with um with exercise number one in the, in the section six of chapter 14 we want to compute the volume of uh, the volume inside z equal to the square root of x to the 2 y to the 2 and inside the sphere the sphere of equation that's a classical sphere center of zero radius a now this guy is a cone it's a cone so what's the situation here um, we do have a sphere centered at zero and then we do have a cone, something like that. And we want to compute the volume of this. Of this red object here inside. OK, so I'm calling this uh, red part V. Maybe I should use the red V. And we want to compute the volume of V. So volume of V will be the triple integral over V, right? Of dx, dy, dz. So that's essentially it. Of course, uh, we are in a situation in which uh, it's not suggested, or it's not recommended to to use uh, Cartesian coordinates, it's, I mean, we have a sphere, we have a cone. Um, the idea here is to use a spherical coordinates. We want to use the spherical change of variable then. So what is the spherical change of variable or the spherical coordinates? So, so we want to use spherical, the spherical coordinates. And these are, as you well know, x is equal to r sine phi cosine theta. Y is equal to r sine phi sine 
theta and z is equal to r cosine phi and uh, theta belongs to 0 to pi and the phi belongs to 0 pi and r is positive these are the spherical coordinates and uh, the important thing that we have not to forget is the Jacobian of this uh, transformation so the Jacobian determinant the Jacobian determinant of the spherical coordinates is r squared sine phi right so you have to remember always this guy um, yeah in, yeah uh, all right so that integral that i wrote here i can call i so i is going to be the triple integral of first of all just let me write the Jacobian sine of phi. Okay, so theta will be between 0 and 2 pi because we have no limitation on theta. Uh, the radius r will be between 0 and a because that's the radius of the sphere. And what about phi? Well, if you look at the phi is this angle here, maybe I should or phi phi is this angle here right so we have a cone and the cone is a uh, is a <coughs> the cone forms an angle of 45 degrees here so it means that phi is also phi is also of 45 degrees so this means that phi is between zero and phi divided by 4. So in dr, d phi, d theta. All right, so what is this equal to? Well, we know how to solve this kind of integrals. If we integrate in r, we get r to the power of 3 divided by 3 sine of phi between a and 0, d phi, d theta. Well, I can integrate in theta immediately here. So here we get also a to the power of 3 divided by 3. And then we are left with the sine of phi d theta. And this is clearly equal to um, a to the power of 3 divided by 3 times 2 pi. And this is not elegant. 2 pi a to the power of 3 divided by 3 times 1 minus the square root of 2 divided by 2 because this is equal to minus cosine between um, 3 and 0 and this is our result that's pretty straightforward do you have questions on this? No questions? Okay. Let me go ahead with the number three. Okay, so we want to compute the volume. The volume of the portion of the space uh, between the two paraboloids 
between the two paraboloids z equal to 10 minus x squared minus y squared and z equal to 2 times x squared plus y squared minus 1. So the situation here is something like this. So we have a paraboloid like this, which is the, the second one. So if, well, actually not really. It goes down a little bit. Because uh, at the point is zero, zero, and z is equal to minus two. So it's something like this. And then we have the other one, the first one that at, at zero, zero, when x is equal to zero, y is equal to zero, z is equal to 10. So, well, we will have something like this. Uh, and so the region here we are interested in is the red one. And there will be some sort of intersection here, curve. Okay, so first of all, we want to find, we need to find what's the, you know, the projection of, uh, on the xy plane of this, of this intersection. So we need to, so we need to intersect the two, surf, the two paraboloids. So intersecting the two paraboloids, we get z equal to blah, blah, and z equal to blah, blah, minus one. So this is leading us to, if you do the computation, z equals to z, then you get x squared plus y squared equal to four at the level z equal to six, if you want to. But, but this is going to be, you know, the, uh, the domain in the, in, in, in the xy plane yeah. of our integration. So it means that the volume of this portion, that I can call again V, so the volume of V, is equal to the triple integral and in the first the two okay so in z so essentially this uh, this volume will be um no, wait a second uh, Why did I change? All right, so Z will be between the upper paraboloid and the lower paraboloid. So the upper bound for Z is X minus, sorry, 10 minus X to the two minus Y to the two and the lower value will be this, right? And in X and Y, we have essentially only a disk of radius four, X uh, centered at zero. So it is X squared plus Y squared equals to four. And this is in D, Z, D, X, D, Y, right? Okay, if you try to solve this in, uh, you can, it's probably possible to solve this in Cartesian coordinates too, but we want to try to, to use the cylindrical coordinates instead. So, this time. Uh, let's try with cylindrical coordinates. These are essentially polar coordinates in the xy plane and you keep that constant. The, you parameterize the whole space with the cylinders essentially. So the cylindrical co coordinates are the usual x equal to r cos theta, y equal to r sine theta, and z is equal to z. And uh, as usual, theta belongs to zero to pi, and r is greater or equal than zero. 
and the, the Jacobian of this change variable is R. So we get that V in cylindrical coordinates is equal to uh, the triple integral with theta that goes between 0 and 2 pi. And then we have that the radius here is between 0 and A. No, uh, it's 0 and 2. And then we have that the endpoints for the last variable, which is Z, that is R10 minus R squared. And then we have 2r squared minus 1. So you see that the expression is actually nicer. And then we have r here. So we have dz uh, dr d theta. So you can immediately integrate in um, theta to get rid of one layer of integration. And we get the 2 pi here. And then we get these guys. And then actually 10 r dz dr and this is equal to let's see uh, um hmm. so we have 2 pi times the integral between 0 and 2 and the result should be R times, um, well, let me do one step more. Z between this two R squared minus two in the R two pi. And that's the integral here. You get R times ten minus R squared minus two R squared plus 2, yes, right, and this is equal to 2 pi integral between 0 and 2 of, uh, what is it, 12r minus 3r to the 3 in the r, and this is a polynomial. The result should be I got something different. There is a mistake in my notes. Let me correct it first. Uh, okay, so the result should be let's see. So we have 2 pi times uh, 6r squared minus uh, 3 divided by 4r to the power of 4, I guess, between 2 and 0. So this is 2 pi times. 24 minus uh, that's uh, 16 divided by 4, which is 4 times 3, which is 12. So this is equal to 24 pi. Is this correct? Uh, yes. Okay, good. Uh, let me correct my notes too. Uh, this is a 4. And this is a three. Yes. Can you see just one moment the previous slide? Yes. Okay. And okay. And when you say write that dr is uh, zero to two, where you get the two? Sorry, I missed this passage. Um. So from here. The intersection between the paraboloids is the the the, the, the circle of radius two and the mm. center zero, right? So that's yeah, that's yeah. gonna be the, the projection here. Yeah, yeah, so I that's see. That's your domain of integration. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the level that is evil six, you're right, right? Yeah, well, that's that's just the level of of where you you interest where where the intersection happens. But what we are interested in is the projection into the x y plane. So yes. the projection will be at z equal to zero. Yeah, I have the equation of a circle. I found the radius, and then I project on the x y plane. And exactly. Then yeah, okay, clear, clear. Thank you. All right. Other questions? Uh, okay. All right. Um. I guess that I could do. Okay, let me try to do the number five. We want to compute again the volume of um, compute the volume of um, V where V is above the portion of the plane, blah, blah, the space, blah, blah, the portion. Mm. Of R3 uh, above XY plane. And inside the cone, the cone said equal to 2a minus the square root, the sum of the squares, and inside the cylinder x squared plus y squared equals to 2ay. All right. Um, uh, okay, so this is annoying. Okay. Okay, so let's see what, what's the situation here. We have some cone. We have some cone that is something like this, right? So this is uh, 2a, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2a. And then we have some cylinder, but now this cylinder is not centered, let's say, at the origin, but it's it's shifted along the it's moved along the y-axis, so we are kind of here, right? Um, because you can rewrite this equation as minus a squared equals to a squared. Oops. So we have this. this cylinder here and yeah we are interested in what's below here essentially so this is going to be v okay so i guess that All right. Mm. This is tricky. Now let me try to just do okay. So volume of phi. I think uh, using the the uh, cylinder cylindrical coordinates might be a good idea here. So the volume of V is going to be uh, 
the integral, the double integral over um, essentially is a squared less or equal than a squared. This is the, and then we have that z must be between zero and two a minus the square root of this. This is in dz and then we have dx dy. And this of course annoying because you get uh, we get this square root, but um, maybe we can get away with uh, with a change of variables. I don't think that spherical coordinates help at all here. I think the way to go is the cylindrical coordinates. So let's uh, use the cylindrical coordinates. Coordinates. We do get um, this is equal to um, let's see we have um, ah okay wait a second here we have a problem with this uh, guy here okay let me write so z will be between zero and two a minus r which is good, and then we have R, and this is in DZ. Now we have to write this circle using the polar coordinates. Let's see if, if this is something that we, we can do easily. Um, so we do have uh, the circle x squared plus y squared equals to 2y in polar coordinate is of course r squared equal to two times a times r um, sine of theta right and um, and essentially let's see the situation is this this is x this is y i'm assuming that a is positive actually let me write a positive i don't want to deal with the other cases just it's just this simple. Okay, so we have this, uh, and we have to find out how to parameterize this guy. So the radius is going to be equal to to a sine theta. So this is the parameterization of this circle. So you see that this is not a typical. This is not the circle that uh, we usually use, uh, centered at zero, in which the parameterization is just r and theta. Now R depends on theta here, and theta is essentially, you see that this R, if you want, so and this R depends on theta. Uh, and theta will be between the zero and pi, right? Um, because, yeah, for theta equal to zero, we have this, for theta equal to pi, we have this. So we, are, we can parameterize the whole circle. So this means that um, our triple integral that we were writing, let me write uh, question marks here. We go down here. We have that this is equal to, so theta is between zero and pi, we said. Now r is between zero and two a sine theta. And then we have z, which is zero, 2a minus r, r, dz, dr, d theta. Okay, so what is this now? Let's see if we can integrate it. E is not here. Between 0 and 2a sine theta. Now we integrate in z, what do we get? Um, we get r times 2a minus r. Yes, in dr, d theta. Now we integrate in r, pi. So what do we get? Um, let, let me use, I don't like this A. Well, okay, let's anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. So we do get uh, A R squared minus A to the power of three divided by three. And this is going to be between two A sine theta and zero in D theta. So we get, um, uh, 
uh, we get integral between 0 and pi of a times pi. Okay, so I have 2a sine theta squared minus um, it was 2a sine theta to the power of 3 divided by 3 in d theta. This should be the, let me double check one more time. Yes, looks correct. So we can uh, so we can split the integration. So here we have 4 times a to the 3 sine squared theta d theta minus and then here we have 8 divided by 3 a to the 3 this and then we have sine to the power of 3 in d theta. Okay, um, uh, yeah, I guess that the way to go here is, um, let me see, okay, so sine to the power of, of three, I don't want to do all the, com the computations here to show because we have done them so many times, but sine to the power of three, in d theta, that's equal to sine of theta times 1 minus cosine squared theta and d theta. And this is equal to sine of theta that you can integrate and minus cosine squared theta sine theta. You can integrate also because this is the derivative of cosine to the power of 3 theta with a minus maybe. Now, when you have a square, I guess that the way to go here is to use um, double angle formulas. You just write, um, uh, if you want, 1 minus cosine squared d theta, and this is 1 minus uh, 1 plus cosine of 2 theta divided by 2, or, or minus, I don't remember the sign. Let me let me check for the sake of completeness. I don't I want to pick the correct sign. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, that's correct. And we have one plus cosine of two theta. And then you can integrate easily. So when you have done all this integration, you find out that the result is equal to uh, computations. You get that this should be equal to two pi minus 32 divided by nine times uh, a to the three. And there is a factor of, of three here. So this justifies the nine. Okay. Um, this is done. So I think the, the important part of this, uh, this exercise is not the actual integrals, but the parameterization of this, uh, of this circle here with the polar coordinates, that's a bit unusual. Uh, that's different with respect to what we do. Uh, because usually we parameterize circles like this, which is very easy. Uh, yeah, centered at the origin, but in this case, the center is, is shifted. But yeah, you can still parameterize it and get some decent uh, expressions. OK. Let's see the number 6. Ten, six, six. OK, so we want to compute the volume of above the plane, above the plane x, y, under the paraboloid. Um, Z equal to 1 minus x squared minus y squared. And in the wedge, the wedge, Q 
here square root of 3x so uh, yes so if you look at the xy plane you have this uh, straight line y equal to minus x and then you have This is y equal to the square root of 3 times x. So we are inside here in the xy plane. Actually, I should have used the red as usual. Red. And then we have some paraboloid. So we are below a paraboloid and within this. So in the, the three dimensional picture would be something like this uh, x, y. Z. Uh, okay, this picture sucks because I always paint in the other direction. All right, but we can uh, this is this blah blah blah. So we have uh, we are we are here right x and negative y. And uh, we are here, and then we have some paraboloid that tops at one. So we have something like this. So these two planes give some sort of uh, of walls, and then we have that this, and then we go down till here, and then we have. Yeah, so it's the portion, it's this portion here. It's it's easier to describe with the uh, algebraic inequalities than uh, just make a picture. And, yeah. Okay, so let's see. This uh, this exercise can be solved probably again using cylindrical coordinates. Um, so in cylindrical coordinates. Coordinates. Uh, the paraboloid equation is z equal to one minus r squared. And what what about the, the angle here? Well, we are between the the straight line y equal to minus x and y equal to the square root of three x. Um, uh, what about theta? So what about theta? Well, theta is going to be between uh, minus pi divided by four, right? Which because it's the the angle which is formed by the straight line uh, x plus y equal to zero and the x axis, and uh, uh, the square root no. Um, Pi divided by three. That's the tangent of the other straight line, if you want the derivative. So in conclusion, um, the volume is equal to the triple integral. And then we have, so z will be between zero and one minus r squared. And then we said that r is between zero and one. Right. Well, we didn't say it, but it's pretty clear because that's the intersection between the paraboloid and the xy plane. It's a it's a circle of radius one, and the angle is minus pi divided by four and pi divided by three here. That's gonna be. I don't forget the Jacobian. Dz, dr, and d theta. And this is very easy. Pi divided by three minus pi divided by four, and then we have. May I ask you a little question? Yes. Uh, I didn't get, where do you get theta from the tangents? Well, you have two straight lines. Uh, yes. And, and theta is this angle here. You can span between. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Thank I you. mean, yeah. I mean, that's uh, literally there. I. It's it's it, you have two straight lines, so you cannot really make any mistake. Here. Yeah, yeah, I see. Sorry, yeah, thank you. 
Uh, right, so I was doing the calculation here. Okay, so we have dr, d theta. Now we can write actually d theta. The integrand that doesn't depend on theta, so you get immediately seven divided by twelve theta, which is uh, pi divided by three minus minus pi divided by four, and then you're integrating theta. It's a polynomial. What do we get here? We get r two divided by two minus r four divided by four, right? Between one and zero, and that's equal to seven divided by forty-eight pi. This is the result of our calculation. Uh, yes. Yeah, so when you have triple integrals, remember that uh, spherical coordinates is not necessarily the only um, choice. You might want to use um, might want to use a, a spherical, uh, sorry, cylindrical coordinates too. So that's another choice. Those two are the most uh, appealing usually. Uh, it's not always the case, but okay. So we have four minutes. I'm not. Uh, well, I can state the next problem and then we, we can have a break. So the next problem is the 13. Actually, I don't know if I want to do all the triple integrals. Maybe I should uh, at some point just stop and do uh, a section 7. Yeah, that's a good idea, I think. Yeah, because we don't have time now. Okay, I'll stay to this and then we'll see later. Okay, so this is equal to this i. We want to compute, now it's not, it's not a volume, it's just an integral. We want to compute the triple integral over r of the function x squared plus y squared plus z squared in dv, uh, where r, is the region above the cone z equal to c times x squared plus y squared, c is some constant, and inside the sphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared equal to a squared, right? Um, so what is this object here? We have a cone, which is something like this. That's a standard cone. And we have a sphere centered at the origin. Um, OK. Looks like similar to what we have solved already. I mean, the region is this inside here. So this is R. Of course, the function that uh, we want to integrate is not anymore the constant, but it's a uh, something. So, OK, well, it's a good moment to stop and uh, to have a break of 15 minutes. Can I ask a question, Daniele? Yes. Um, uh, sorry for my previous question. I see immediately I was a little bit, uh, but the exercise 14.6.5, mm -hmm. I get the slightly, uh, it was not easy because it's the only one I didn't do home because I'm a bit behind with the schedule, but mm -hmm. I, I got lost uh, because this is not which, the- uh, Which yeah, problem? This one, this one, exactly. Yes. And uh, basically, we, we have this. Uh, uh, we have these two functions. No equation, sorry. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, you reparameter. Okay, the pa first part. Okay. This. Okay. Then we move to cylindrical. But the mm -hmm. problem is the next page when you. Okay. Because the circle is not as in the in the in, in the region. It's then then one no, is exactly. easier. So right. To, 
Right? Well, but you just uh, you, you just uh, stick the cylindrical coordinates in the equation of the circle. You get, get the r squared equal to two a r sine theta, and you divide by r, which is yes. assumingly pretty positive. Mm -hmm. And you get that r is equal to two a sine theta. That's a that's a perfect uh, parameterization for r. Essentially, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's this, this circle is parameterized in this case by by one parameter only because you have theta. Yeah, yeah. If you want, and then you have r, but r depends on theta too. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, so that's my, that's my question because uh, yeah, I mean r change by change, it's related to it depend on exactly, theta. exactly. Usually, you when you have a uh, usually you have uh, I mean you can write the same thing with the, with the but but r usually does not depend. R is simply a constant. Uh, in uh, in the circle, uh, I mean, when you have a circle like this, uh, centered at the origin here, you yes, just parameterize by constant, yeah. the the radius is constantly equal to yeah. one maybe, and then you have just uh, in this case the yeah. radius is not constant; it depends on theta. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, it... Now now I see. Yeah, it just uh, um, you change in polar coordinates, so you take the x exactly. squared plus y squared and equal to a y, and you change it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, very clear. Yeah. Okay. The, the rest is just a little uh, trigonometry now. It's just uh, yeah. What do we yeah, yeah. Do? That's uh, that's just uh, tri trigonometry. I mean, here I've written some details, but uh, you can ah. feel them in. Can you leave uh, this page, maybe? <laughs> yeah, sure. Thank you. You're welcome.
Okay. Fifteen. So what do we have here? Mm. Ah, yeah, we started with something. Okay. Okay, so um Right, so here um, we were solving this integral i. The situation is clearly a situation of a spherical coordinates, right? We have the domain which is inside a sphere. The function that appears in the integral is essentially the radius function, which is radial indeed and can be simplified with a spherical coordinates. So um, uh, this exercise is cream support spherical coordinate so we are using spherical coordinate so we solve we solve i using spherical coordinates now the question is there is only a little tricky thing uh, to figure out and uh, this thing is um, to find out the, the endpoints for the three variables specifically of one it's not really tricky but um, so what, what are the endpoints for for a uh, for r that's going to be between zero and a so for theta that's from zero to two pi from phi, phi is zero and what? Um, so phi is this angle here. Now, <clears throat> usually the cone that we have is as a c equal to i in front of the square root, right? So we know that in that case, the angle is 45 degrees. In this case, it's not 45 degrees anymore. So if you look at the situation, for example, uh, in the x z plane uh, z plane we have this is the situation that we have this is the function z equal to c square root of x right because i said y equal to zero and now of course um the the, the if you want the tangent of this uh, straight lines half of the straight lines is c so the angle this angle here alpha alpha is equal to the arc tangent of c right so this means that uh, in our notation um, our angle will be uh, pi divided by 2 minus the arc tangent of C, right? The complement of this, which is, by the way, equal to the arc tangent of 1 divided by C. That's a notorious uh, identity, very nice. You can prove that, uh, prove that arc tangent of x plus arc tangent of 1 divided by x is equal to pi divided by 2 for some values of x actually for x not equal to 0 that for x non zero but this is just a sub a sub tool it's just a detail. Uh, you can uh, as well write uh, pi divided by 2 minus arc tangent of c. That's perfectly OK. OK, then with this uh, change of variables, we, are, we can rewrite our integral i. And this is going to be the integral between 0 and a, the integral between 0 and 2 pi, integral between 0 and we said arc tangent uh, 
Let me rewrite this. Arctangent of C maybe zero A zero. What did I say? Two pi. And then we have what? R squared, which is the function. And then we have the Jacobian, which is R squared sine of phi. And then we have dr, and then we have d phi, and then we have d theta. Okay, the whole thing does not depend on theta, so we can reintegrate in theta. We get the two pi factor. Um, the integration in r gives also um, times a five divided by five, and then we have the integral between zero and arc tangent of C, this arctangent of C is just a number. So it's a, it's, it's a number, it's, it's fixed by, by, the, the, by the problem divided by five. Uh, and this is equal to minus cosine phi between arctangent of C and zero. And this is equal the, therefore to two pi uh, divided by five, a to the five times one minus the cosine of the arctangent of C. This is the result. I'm not sure what, what the solution says. Yeah, it writes uh, in another form, but this is correct. You can just write it like this. Any question so far? No? OK. Uh, just the previous page is the, the little thing you write at the bottom. That is mm -hmm. only. Oh, okay, now it's a proof for X. Is it just that's a... an exercise? That's an exercise for you. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, okay. Well, I mean, I, if I remember correctly, Jan Frederick uh, had this exercise in his lecture notes and um, analysis of one variable, so you should know how to do this. But this is, uh, I mean, for this function to be constant, you need to prove that, uh, well, you start, if you want to do that, you, you might start to compute the first derivative and see what you get. You will get that this is equal to zero likely. So the function might be constant or piecewise constant. Mm. So this is how you do. Okay. Um, I don't think it's worth to spend more time in these triple integrals. There is the exercise 17, and there is the exercise 18, which is particularly, well, it's not actually that tricky. But, but uh, we have another section to investigate, and um, maybe it's worth to. So I'm skipping the, skipping the, 16, the 17 and, uh, and 18, and I'm going to the section 7. Uh, even though I'm not sure that this is a good idea, but um, Marcus insists in putting this uh, surface integrals in this course. So for those of you who will take the next, uh, uh, the next course in several variables analysis, you will see more carefully these things. Um, um, but, uh, but maybe we can anticipate some problems here. I mean, in the end, everything reduces to calculations of integrals. Yeah. Okay, so let's let, let's let's see let, let, let's see some of them. So we are in section seven now, um, and um, what we want to do essentially in this section. So let me write something. So we used 
double and triple integrals to compute areas and volumes. However, uh, multiple integrals integrals allow to compute also mm, the so-called surface integrals um, right so what are surface integrals well you have some surface in the in the space and maybe you want to compute uh, the area of a portion of this surface maybe you want to compute the area of this portion here and this is possible via uh, surface integrals so So surface integrals uh, to compute areas of surfaces in R3 or Rn, right? So you, if you want, you might think that you're taking a plane. What's the surface? Well, you take a plane or a subset of the plane, let's say a square, right? And then you, you do a transformation phi into the plane, no, into the space. You transform con continuously this uh, square in, I don't know, something, you stretch it a little bit, you twist it a little bit, get some sort of napkin here so this is your surface and uh, and you want to compute uh, you want to compute the area this is not uh, anymore the area of the square because you are stretching a little bit and you can do that continuously without breaking the the square napkin that you have because you know because of the I mean, you can do that because of the structure of the reals, essentially. Uh, so in particular, um, in particular, I think that uh, the exercises of today are um, uh, with uh, some specific uh, surfaces, with uh, surfaces have some specific form. But let's see, so, so in the number one, we want to compute the area of the surface um, which surface, which is the part of the plane z equal to 2x plus 2y inside the cylinder x squared plus y squared equal to 1. So the situation here is that, is that we, we have a cylinder what's going on? Guys. So guys, can you shut up? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so what was I saying? Uh, okay, so we have a cylinder. 
here uh, and we have a plane that intersects uh, this cylinder like this for instance and this equation maybe Well, not really there. I'm gonna mute the next time that happens, everybody. So, <clears throat> so we have this intersection here, um, and this intersection will be some sort of, uh, I guess, a lift between this plane and the cylinder, right? So. Okay, so this this surface that we have is is a plane, right? Is a plane, and then and then we have to find out what's the area of the red part. So the plane well, the plane can be parametrized by essentially a map. X, Y that sends into uh, X, Y and uh, 2X plus 2Y, right? So this is the parameterization of your, um, of your plane. And you have learned that uh, the surface area will be equal to the double integral over some domain d that we have to find out time in in ds now this ds is a new me so called measure this new measure cannot be the plane measure this measure needs to take into account the curvature or the bending or the twisting of your surface right so and you have seen that uh, for a surface of the type uh, so you have seen You have seen that for a surface of the type uh, z equals to z of x, y, ds is equal to the square root of what? 1 plus, plus this squared dx dy. So this is the correct measure in which you um, that can that gives you the the correct uh, uh, contribution, um, right? So the x dy. So and then uh, he, the task here is to compute this uh, this thing. So in our case, the function is um, co essentially linear in both variables. So this contribution will be constant, like one would expect. Uh, um, so in our case, uh, we have z is equal to 2x plus 2y. Uh, and uh, dz dx is equal to 2. dz dy is equal to 2. And ds is therefore equal to the square root of 1 plus the square 2. So it's 4, 4, dx dy, right? So this is 3 dx dy. So the contribution here, the, the measure is constant. So our integral, so surface area, it's going to be the double integral of 3 dx dy, because it's, the s is, is equal to 3 dx dy. What's the domain? Well, the domain is simply the projection on the xy plane of the intersection between our plane and the cylinder. That's going to be the disk of radius one. And then this is super easy. We have three times, well, I don't even write the double integral, that's pi. Yes, so this is, uh, this is a sim the simplest example that you you can have essentially because your yeah you don't have any dependence on x and y in the ds so everything is constant okay so let's see 
another example, number three. The reason why the DS uh, is like this is probably something that you've seen in uh, in the class. So when you have, you can well, we will prove a general formula for uh, for general surfaces with a general parametrization of the type uh, UV that sends. But the, what happens essentially is that. Well, I don't know if I want to spend much time on this. This parameterization fee that I, I, I wrote here. You remember a curve is just a, you. You take a line, you twist it, and you bend it. You, and you get a curve in the plane. The same thing happens in the in the surface cases. Case right. You you take a, a portion of the plane, and then you may you make it into some surface in the, in the space. So, mathematically, this is essentially taking u and v parameters and sending them into some function uh, phi1 of uv, phi2 of uv, and phi3 of uv, right? Um, so now if you take, you can prove that um, if you take uh, this is phi, Essentially, when you take the the derivative of um, the partial derivatives, if you take a point on on the surface here, for instance here, and you take the partial derivatives of phi at this point, maybe I can call it a p. So you have that one partial derivative will be, for example, a vector in this direction and one partial derivative in this direction. If specifically they are linearly independent. Um, so um, so the uh, let's see, let me use another color here. The area of the little. green parallelogram is given by uh, the modulus of the vector product between the partial derivatives here, which is, which is yes. So, um, if you want, uh, yeah, du, dv. You have to think that this this uh, this green parallelogram is very small, so you have this little contribution du and dv. So now the integral. What does the integral do? It's essentially summing all of these little areas, and this is essentially giving you your surface uh, your surface area and in specifically when when phi is is of the type uh, u v and uh, phi one of u v then, then the modulus is equal to this square root that we have seen plus this is squared plus this is squared. So what we are doing is a special case of, of a more general. But this is something that you should have seen with Marcus and you will see later on. So if you don't understand this, this now, it's not a big deal. Essentially, what it, it is requested from you now is just that you should be able to compute this type of integrals. So back to our exercise number three. Uh, we want to compute the area of the surface 
uh, of the hemisphere. Z equal to the square root of a squared minus x squared minus y squared, right? Let me see if there is some specification on the domain. No. Well, so we have seen that we need the ds. So we need the ds. So what's the ds here? Um, it's going to be the square root of 1 plus is a square plus the z dy square dx dy. So what is this? If you do the partial derivatives, you get that this is minus x divided by the square root of a squared minus uh, x squared minus y squared squared plus minus y divided by z squared dx dy. Well, z is uh, this guy here. So this is equal to the square root of If you sum them together, you get z, and then you get the z here plus x squared plus y squared, and this is equal to a squared divided by a squared minus x squared minus y squared dx dy. So this is our surface measure, and now we we need to compute the integral. So s is equal to The double integral over, I guess that, uh, I mean, this is an hemisphere, so it's uh, it's the upper part of this sphere here. So that the, the domain of integration is just a disk. So the domain of integration is a disk of the center zero and radius a. And then the function that we have to integrate is this one here a squared divided by a squared minus x squared minus y squared dx dy. So now you see that you reduce the, the problem of computing a surface area to the problem of computing essentially a double integral. Once you know how to do that, to reduce this problem. OK, how do we solve this? Well, first of all, a good idea here might be to use uh, the cylindrical coordinates. So we get that A is pulled out, take, take, it, take it out. And then we have the integral between 0 and A, between 0 and 2 pi. Uh, Jacobian, which is R, divided by A squared minus R squared. And this is using cylindrical coordinates. And then we have d theta dr. OK. What is this equal to? We have 2 pi a, because I'm integrating theta immediately. And then we are left with this uh, integral, a squared. This, this is equal to 2 pi a. Um, uh, clearly, this is the derivative of minus the square root of a squared minus r squared, right? So between a and 0. So this is 2 pi a times 0 minus minus a. So that's 2 pi a squared. So now you see how to... Uh, Probably in high school, you have been told that then. So high school teacher told you that the area of the sphere is 4 pi a 
for re of r squared now you know why mm. why uh, surface integrals and uh, the proof is uh, what i've done so far essentially you just take a uh, you just take a uh, half of the sphere you do and then the other half will be the same thing yeah questions about this things uh, should there be one half at the end no because um no because you have a there should be one half but then there, you have a two coming from the the r squared in the derivative so you have two and it simplifies with the one half right um, okay i mean when you differentiate this function here with respect to r you get one you get what you said i think uh, or let me let me cut it out this you get one half and then you get one divided by the square root, blah blah. But then you have the derivative of what's inside, which is two times minus two times r, and this two simplify. So uh, the only thing you get is a minus one factor. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Um, okay. So this is uh, this is the exercise number three. We can give a look to something else. Number five, for instance. Seven five. Again, uh, here we have a uh, area compute the area of the conical surface. Um, three z to the power of two equal to x squared plus y squared, and z is between zero and two. Okay, so in the same fashion, we can write um, this uh, surface as a square root, or mean, or mean uh, as a function of x and y. So you can write this. You can say that z is equal to plus or minus, but the, but the problem tells us that z must be between zero and two, so we take the positive square root. So we get this divided by three with a plus. And now we need to compute the dz, the, sorry, the ds. So ds, we have seen how to do that. And this is going to be the square root of one plus um, the square root of three divided by three times x divided by the square root of x squared plus y squared plus the square root of 3 divided by 3. I know, but these are the derivatives. I have to um, take power of 2 times y divided by the square root of the same thing, square dx dy. This is equal to 1 plus 1 third x squared divided by r squared plus one third x squared, no, y squared divided by r squared dx dy. I write r squared because I want to, to save time and space. So what is this? If you sum these two up together, you get essentially two thirds. So luckily, the game, again, we have a constant situation here. We have one plus two thirds dx dy, which is equal to uh, what do we have? Three plus five. I know it's just one third, not two thirds. So we get two divided by the square root of three. Or if you want, two to the square root of three divided by three. Yes, so. The surface is going to be the integral over some domain d that we will find now of this number for me ds. So this is just 2 square root of 3 divided by 3 dx dy. What is this domain? 
Okay, so we have a conical surface. Um, uh, let's see. The conical surface is something like this. And this is why an X and Z. Conical. But then the problem told us that Z was between 0 and 2, right? So as, as Z equal to 2, we have the maximal uh, height. So this means that the projection onto the XY plane of the I mean, the, our domain of integration will be essentially what you get when you stick two equal to z equal to two in the in the equation of the cone. So the domain of integration is going to be x squared plus y squared less or equal than twelve. Because um, yeah, so this is uh, equation of the cone when z is equal to 2. So this is our domain of integration. Now this is again a constant, constant thing. We get 2 square root of 3 divided by 3 times the area of that. The radius is the square root of 12. Uh, but we have to square it, so we get 12 times pi. You can simplify, you get a 4 here, you get 1. So this, the solution is 8 square root of 3 pi. So this is the surface area of the cone, of that portion of the cone. Questions about this? Uh, yes, one quick question. When you, uh, you defined yes, you use uh, the same uh, method as before, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, but sorry, see because where did you get the r square? It just you move to well, well, r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. Ah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. just yeah. I just wrote r squared because I wanted to be mm -hmm. to save some and few then, seconds. Okay, what what is what's happened? The next passage, the statement. Uh, just sum these two. Uh -huh. You sum these two, ga yeah, two guys it. together, and then okay. you just get one divided. Yeah, yeah, you get yeah. R squared divided by R squared. Yes. Okay. Okay. And you get one third. Equation of the cone and okay, and in twelve, where do you get twelve? Yeah. Well, this is what I was saying before. So let me do a better picture. So um, you have some cone here. Mm -hmm. Uh. The equation of the cone is given. Yes. And then it, it the problem says also that you have to consider the cone between for z, which is between zero and two. So the maximal mm. value for for z is z equal to two, right? Yes. Now I, we are interested now in the lateral surface, which is the red thing. Now you have to think that this, this is something in three D, not the, this stupid picture that I've done here. Right? You have to think that. Uh, uh, this is a uh, this is a cone, right? This is a good picture. Okay. <laughs> so you need you need now to find the domain of integration for you. What's the domain of integration? That's going to be the projection of the this uh, black disk uh -huh. that I painted uh -huh. there on yeah, the X Y yeah. plane, right? Mm -hmm. So that's your domain of integration. And the domain of integration is therefore uh, that disk, and that disk is the one that you got you got. Uh, inserting in the equation of the cone when you substitute a z equal to two essentially uh, in this uh, in this equation here. Mm, this yes. So z equal to two, you get uh, three times yes. four equal to yeah. x squared plus y squared. Yeah, precise. Yeah, I see. I see. Perfect. So this, uh, I mean, this disk is essentially the domain of your parameterization, right? Because this is uh, this is how you define your surface <laughs> integrals. But uh, I mean, for now, I think this there is not enough time today or to explain exactly why are we are integrating over this disk. Uh, you have to, in some sense, believe me, uh, because the, uh, this is not real, really part of this course. It's uh, I mean, these exercises are 
supposed to show you an application of uh, of double integrals, not really mm -hmm. to explain how the real surface integration works. Um, but what about the exam? Can be a part of exam one of the, uh, one of these exercises, or is it just for our personal uh, education? Well, in per in principle, yes, you might uh, you might find uh, an exercise on this. Uh, okay. I think in all the exams, but but I mean. The probability of finding is probably quite low. I mean, very low. <coughs> so I wouldn't worry about this. I mean, there are a lot of yeah. uh, mu much more other things to worry about. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, of course, everything that has been done in this course is uh, potentially uh, a theme uh, for an exercise. So from from the lecture zero when you did the topology to the lecture whatever 20 or which is surface integration but what i can tell you is that uh, the surface integration probably won't be in the exam because surface integration is a topic that we will see in several variables too so that's why i'm saying this so there's a bit of over overlapping between the two courses we will see a lot of uh, problems uh, in, uh, for those who will take that course. Okay. I think I can do one more and then we just call the day. There is uh, four minutes. Let's see the number six. Now my pen doesn't work. Yes, it does. 14.7.6. So we want to compute the area of the paraboloid uh, z equal to 1 minus x squared minus y squared in the first octant. Octant. So now you have some paraboloid here, and then you're interested to compute into computing the surface of this paraboloid, but only in the first in the first octant here. And again, the picture sucks, but uh, you can do a better picture in your notes if you want. Um, right, so we follow the same scheme as before. We compute the ds. ds is going to be the square root of one plus what? So you take the derivatives, you get four x squared plus four y squared dx dy. Well, this is not constant anymore. And the S, the surface integral, is going to be double integral on the first octant. Actually, first uh, quadrant, because this is a two-dimensional domain. Of ds. And in we can write it directly in polar coordinates, in polar coordinates. Uh, the first quadrant is theta between 0 and pi divided by 2, and radius of this is just 1. So you get of what? Of 1 plus, I change the variable, I get 4r squared, and then we have the Jacobian, which is r. This is perfect. The r d theta. Uh, yeah. OK. So theta. This integral does not depend on theta, so we get already a pi divided by 2 times integral between c and 1 of this guy for r squared r dr. What is this equal to? Uh, OK, so this is, of course, 1 plus 4r squared to the power of 3 divided by 2. Now I have to figure out the constants. Uh, when I differentiate this guy, I get a 3 divided by 2, so I get uh, times 2 divided by 3. But then I get also a 4 times 2r, so 1 divided by 8. So the, this, so this is actually 4 and this is 1. So this is going to be uh, pi divided by 2 times. And for r equal to 1, I get 5 to the 3 divided by 2. 
actually I could have put I could have put the one divided by eight outside this minus one. So we get uh, <laughs> Something different to my notes. Uh, ah, no, it's a, it's a not eight. It's um, it's twelve. It's not twelve. So the result here is pi divided by twenty four times five square root of five minus one. So this is the area of this portion of the parabola. Okay, it's twelve o'clock. Uh, this was the last seminar with new things. Tomorrow and on Friday, we are going to give a look to the old exams. Uh, as I said, I strongly encourage you to, to do the exercise on your own. I have no idea on your what's, what is your level, and this is not good, because I can't speak with you, and I can't see you solving the exercises on a blackboard. Please do the exercises in advance and uh, come with the questions and uh, because this will be the last of times in which you can uh, then the exam is when next week or it's quite soon so yeah yes it's next week okay so it's the next week so yeah you have uh, 10 days or whatever to wrap up and uh, test yourself so I have I have uploaded a bunch of old exams in the Canvas page. There is a C file that you can download. It contains old exams and solutions. Don't look at the solutions before doing the, the exam. This is completely useless. Try to solve every problem for at least one hour. When you do not succeed, then you might look at the solutions, but don't look at the solutions before doing the exam. That's pointless. And uh, yeah, that is all. If you have questions, I can stay here a little bit longer. Otherwise, see you tomorrow. Thank you, Daniele. No worries. See you.